traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the welding zone. Do, 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 Hey, welcome, welders. This is episode number 54 of Adventures in Welding. And as I promised a couple episodes ago, today we're going to weld pipe on the plate. Like if you were making a flange, maybe you wanted to make um, a stick holder. Or imagine this is, you know, four feet long and this is a... Uh, 24 by 24 by half inch piece of plate and you're making a stand for something, but it's all the same idea And what we're going to talk about are the techniques and How to minimize the distortion from heat This is only quarter inch steel plate. This is schedule 40 pipe, which is just slightly bigger than quarter inch steel plate <coughs> Excuse me Now what I've done just to save time, is I put four tacks, one at each of the cardinal positions, and I hit them with the grinder and feathered them down a little bit. So everything is clean and it's tacked. Now, to weld this, uh, we're going to use 7018, 1 inch, 7018. You're going to want to do this as you would any fillet weld. Consid just consider it a fillet weld because that's what it is. You're going to want to keep that 45 degree angle between the base and the pipe. As you move around the pipe, that's what you have to consider above all else, is keeping that correct rod angle. Now, how are you going to do that? Power's off, so we're not going to make any sparks here. We're just going to talk about this a little bit now the way I, I would do it and the way I, I'm going to weld it for you today is um, I'm going to go from tack to tack so we're going to weld this in quarters for instance if I started this tack this would be the east tack and move to the south tack I'm going to keep my 45 degree angle as I move through here and it gets more difficult as you come around to the back. Now, what I've seen done on welding tips and tricks, I've never done it, but maybe we can try it, is uh, Jody bends his electro down like this. And he starts here. And as he comes over here, he says it's just a matter of twisting your wrist. That looks like a pretty good idea. Maybe we'll give that a shot, too. So, we're going to treat this like a fillet with a 45 degree angle. We're going to keep our rod angle as even as possible, go from tack to tack. Now, this is the east to south tack, and this is 90 degrees. Our, we're going to let it cool in between. And then our next weld will be the north to west, the opposite side. So the pulling that we're going to get from the shrinkage when we've done this zone <clears throat> should be counteracted by the pulling from the shrinkage of this zone. Then we'll let it cool. We'll come over here and we'll weld this one up. This is the north to east. And then finally the west to south. Letting them cool in between, minimizing warping. <clears throat> I am a uh, frequent traveler to the uh, forums online. You might find me on there as P. Rebrus or Tig Maniac. I'm on all of them. And I was just reading today uh, about a technique. You would, you would need thicker metal than this. But of getting some sort of a pan and placing water in it and resting your base plate in there, basically, so that the water only comes up about halfway on the base plate, and using that as a giant heat sink. 
I don't have enough experience to tell you if that's a good idea or not. It doesn't sound like a good idea to me, but hey, I've done worse. So, let's get this started. Let me get set up. And uh, there's not going to be any arc shots of this today. They're straight stringer fillet welds. But we will look at it closely afterwards. And, and you should be able to see the positions of what I'm doing. And I'll tell you what. I'm going to, I'll do this first quadrant with the rod at 90 degrees from the stinger. I'll do the next quadrant with the uh, Jody Collier method. We'll look at them, we'll see which one looks better, and we'll use that method for the last two quadrants. Sound good? All right. Yeah, wearing a Steeler hat today. The boys in black and gold are, are playing the Dirty Birdies this Sunday. Steelers going to the Super Bowl. All right, we're ready. I've got the machine set at 126 amps. I was aiming for 125, but you know how sensitive the dials on those inverters are. This is 1 8 inch uh, 7018. The uh, paperwork calls for 110 to 170 amps. I'm going to try and keep it a little on the cooler side. We may have to adjust as we go. All right, so we're going to do it the 90 degree stinger method for this first quadrant. Let's get it on. All right, there's our first quadrant. I'm going to cool it off. We'll be right back. All right, now for our second quadrant, I'm going to use the, uh, the Jody method, and we'll see how that goes. As soon as I finish this and I get it cooled off, we'll chip them and we'll have a look. We'll see which one looks better. Alright, I'm going to go cool it off and we'll be right back. Let's clean these off and see how they look. Alright folks, here's the first quadrant that I did with the 90 degree method. And here's the second quadrant I did with Jody's method. Now you can see that my experience with Jody's method is not extensive. So my bead doesn't look as smooth, but I mean it's producing a nice weld. I'm going to stick with the 90 degree method to finish this off. Let's knock out the last two parts. <clears throat> Alright, we've wilded it off as a corners. Now we're going to be tying our welds together. I'm going to 
strike my arc ahead of where we ended the last one and bring the weld into that and then start running the puddle. And that way we don't create any arc strikes that are visible. All right, here we go. Again, I'm going to cool it. We're cooling between every... Uh... <clears throat> All right, here's the last segment. Nothing new to talk about, so let's do it. cool get the chip and hammer clean it up and take a look all right there's our piece nice and welded up decent looking fillet weld it ain't the most beautiful looking fillet weld in the world a little porosity right there but it's a good fillet weld now if we look at the bottom, we can see our heat affected zones. We kept them pretty small. I'd say that's maybe three eighths of an inch around the outside of the pipe. And if we look at the plate head on, we can see maybe a very little bit of curling at the ends. But, uh, I'm calling that baby pretty flat. And we kept this thin plate flat by simply welding here, letting it cool. 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 Here, letting it cool. Now, <clears throat> I dipped these in water today because this is simply for demonstration purposes. You're never going to want to do that. On a structural weld, it makes them brittle and weak. And whoever you're working for will probably smack you upside the head. But um, let's see what we got going here. Buddy, I don't see any space. Yeah, there's a very little tiny bit right there. But that's a pretty jo good job on heat control and input, I, I, I think. Anyway, guys, whoa. Thanks for watching today. I hope you watch the Steelers beat the crap out of the Ravens on Sunday. If you have any questions, uh, take Maniac at gmail.com visit the website tigmaniac.wix.com slash adventures and welding like subscribe share and i will see you next time go Steelers!